I'd almost given up hope of him surviving when I saw Hale coming up in the lift. I could tell from his face that he had found the angel. There was no point in asking. If he was alive, then the angel was dead. Hale was starting to show more effects of the conversion process. His movements had the unnatural quickness of the hybrids. Judging from the bullet holes in his uniform, he had acquired their healing capabilities as well. We had tracked the Chimera leaving Northern Command to a gorge in Somerset. Cartwright led a squad of soldiers after them. It had been two hours since he had reported in. Hale volunteered to go after them. I expected he would locate Cartwright. There was no way I could have imagined what else he would discover in that gorge. Well, well, well. Hey guys, and welcome back to Resistance Fall of Man. Now, Cheddar Gorge, Somerset, eh? This is a serious mission. This one is uh, pretty tough, pretty uh, fun in fighting here, street to street. Um, this is cool as well because you get to see like the Chimera, how they uh, act when they're taking over cities. It's if you could put yourself in that situation, like this would be terrifying. Yeah, we're gonna find out where they're coming from. But this is really cool. I like this urban area. Oh, evening. Hello. And what is this? A new weapon, the Hailstorm. If you're thinking, geez, that looks like a mighty fine weapon, you'd be right. This thing is wicked. Right, let's have a little look, shall we? So, the XR005 Hailstorm is believed to be US, uh, to be of US origin, although it's not found on any known order of battle. The weapon fires subsonic bolts, which is designed to ricochet off hard surfaces. Shots will continue to travel until they find soft targets or are exhausted. Kills outside the line of sight are possible with blank shots. Pushing L1 launches the remainder of the Hellstorm's clip. This creates an auto turret as the clip fires its bolts at nearby targets. The recoil from the bolt will even allow the clip to hang in midair. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> it seems to be way outside the uh, technology of the humans in this game, but psh, hey, sure, I guess. Right, this bit is rough. This town is completely overrun. And we're going to want to be creepy, creepy. Yes, yeah, so the hailstorm is a. Oh, hello. Hello. What did I tell you? Huh? huh? Oh, my God. That didn't exactly go well, did it? And, yep. One problem of fighting in this kind of environment is you're going to get stuck on so much scenery when you're trying to escape. It's just going to happen. That's okay, because we've got our far eye. And we're going to be using this far eye quite a lot here. You know, when it actually hits targets. Come on. There we go. Oof. Kind of cool they're actively looking for us. And like sweeping the streets. Hello, guys. There we go. Just going to give as many of these guys lobotomies as possible. Because there is lots of enemies here. And I do mean lots. Um, I'm pretty sure I did try doing this on hard years and years ago. Uh, I can't remember if I actually completed it or not. There's a good chance I probably did, because I had a lot more time back then, but my god, that would have been rough. Check out some of these houses. It's interesting that these, like, you can explore these houses, man, but, hmm, nothing in there at all. Completely barren. Which makes sense, they probably smashed all the furniture up to make um, uh, these fortifications and whatnot. Oh, health. Needed that. 
Yeah, we're definitely not on our, on our own out here. Hey, fellas. Let's try and take as many of these guys out as we can. we got one round left. Which ain't great. So that means one dead enemy. Whoa. Oh, go for the big one. Always go for the big one. You know, unless the big one hides. And then you can't go for the big one. That's fine. We're just going to use our own Argo against this guy. Although I never have a lot of success with this gun, to be honest. The enemy seem to be way better at using it than I ever got, which is fine. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Sick of your shit. Um, let's sweep round the corner with a shotgun. Ooh, didn't like that. All right, that's okay. Ooh. Short control bursts, apparently. Anyway, if we go down here, I think there's some goodies. There is no goodies. Titan is a very dull boy, apparently. Alright. You can blow the cars up here as well, which is quite cool. You kind of can use that to your advantage, but... As with uh, the explosions from other methods in this game. The explosions are very hit and miss. Sometimes they're really useful and other times, you know, enemies can be right next to them and they don't do anything. So anyway, let's grab up the stuff. Now right here will be our first intel of this mission, which is Field Guide, which just shows us all of the different, or at least half of the uh, Chimeran units that are known so far. And this is kind of cool. I I appreciate this one. Well, that field guide really gives a humongous amount of information to our troops. I'm assuming it probably gives tips on how to deal with each one. That kind of thing. Who knows. Evening, gentlemen. Evening. Let's ruin their day. Oh, he had a bit of a fall over. Come on, let's get some of that health back. This bit is rough. Ooh. Ooh. We've got some hedgehogs. We've got five hedgehogs. Well, I don't know about the cavalry exactly, but... We're going to do what we can. Um. Yeah, all right. I'm trying to get my hands dirty. Trying to effectively use hedgehogs as well. But, I don't know man, the grenades are weird. It's like hail tries to throw them literally out of the Earth's atmosphere. Very difficult to use effectively. Hit them from the sides. Well, no shit, you can see they're just, you know, cover as well is another huge bugbear of mine for this game. Uh, you can be hiding behind cover, but it doesn't it doesn't matter because as you can see they're down there and they're still somehow shooting through the cover. I don't get it. Okay, let's try. Ooh, get that behind there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh I am giving them what for. Can't really be giving them much else, to be honest. Oof. That went a lot. Oh, hello. Easier. And smoother than last time. Oh, jeez. Didn't realize they have these little crappy guys as well. That's fine. We can handle these. Oh, God, there's two more of them at least. That's not fantastic. Get fucked. Who else is... Oh, hello. Didn't see you guys over there. That's cute. Gun wasn't working for some reason. 
Ooh. Ooh. Shot him into cover. That was going to be like a big thing that the cell CPU is going to bring to gaming. Console gaming, I should say. Massive, destructible environments. Yeah, how did that work out? was the best soldier in my command. Nothing got past him. He must have known Hale was infected when they first met in Nottingham. Fortunately, Cartwright never cared too much about the small stuff. Oh yeah. Now we basically get a not a warthog moment. Now, <laughs> these vehicle sections, or I should say really this vehicle section, I remember I really didn't like it at the time. Um, I kept comparing this thing to the Halo warthog for good reasons, really. Uh, but it's not a warthog. <laughs> like... It's really not so we might a, a little retribution. See, the tank is okay. The tank, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's a big, slowly creeping machine of death. This is not very good at all. Um, I get what they were going for with this thing. But it's got a machine gun on the back, which you see Cartwright is using. Uh, it's it's one notch up from useless, and it controls like I don't know. It's really hard to explain. It feels really heavy and slow. It you you can't throw it around like you can with a warthog. It's just it's the animation and the physics for it. It's just they feel really shit. Um, however, having said that, this section isn't as bad as I originally thought it was. Because you can just cheese it anyway. So, let's go. Now this vehicle is invincible. Which is good. Because we're going to be using this as much as we can. Oh god. That went... Excellently. Now, the rub of this bit here is there is a section. Oh, and I, I tell you what, though, running those guys over is very satisfying. You see Cartwright on the machine gun there. Um, not only does it turn extremely slowly, the accuracy of that gun is really bad. But that'll be illustrated a little bit later. But running these guys down feels really good. I will say that. It feels fucking fantastic, in fact. It's so satisfying. But this thing's invincible, and he has unlimited ammo. So there's that. You can also just, like, park him here, and then go and hide. Whilst he does most of the work for you. But we've got a big driving section now that is populated with these gates and in each one of these gates you got to go and push a button. Yeah, it's one of those filler missions. But it's okay. Again, the story kind of just carries you through a little bit. Because what's going on here is kind of interesting. I'm a looking. I'm a looking. And again, we're stuck on the scenery. <laughs> you all get stuck on everything here. Um, let's grab you. Need something that fires rapid. Oh, our health just evaporated. I'm going to have to watch that footage back. <laughs> My health literally just disappeared as I walked up there. That's interesting. I don't know whether that's just because there was so many of them or what. That was a bit bizarre. Anyway, don't forget to beep the boop whilst you're up here. Because otherwise you will have to come all the way back. Yeah, you can see, although he's rattling off shots, he's probably not actually hitting anything. 
And you can see their bullets, in fact, actually are disappearing before they get here. It's just these little, these little details that make this game fall quite a bit short. Um, you know, but when you read about the development history of this game, it, it makes sense. Given a very small window to come up with some kind of new alternate reality FPS game. I don't even think they were stipulated with that. They just wanted uh, something that could stand in the same sort of vein as Halo. So any kind of like FPS game, I guess, single player. Now, did they achieve that? Yeah. Yeah, I think they did. We had a solid... St oh, God. Yeah, sometimes they can almost... It almost feels like they can point their guns down at you from up there. Like, blind firing down is a bit obnoxious. But this was a... Yeah, I, I still stand by the fact that this game was a very solid start. Right, let's drive you home, sunshine. The Yaga would probably be a really good weapon here. Actually. This is what the weapon was designed for, after all. Having said that, it's kind of difficult to see where they are. So, yeah, maybe not. Anyway, let's go beep the second boop. Any goodies? But you can see these guys are starting to build their own fortifications. I do like that. It really doesn't seem... We're going, we're going. It really doesn't seem to uh, take them long to start developing these fortifications. Which is terrifying. They have one hell of an industrial machine. But then when you think about the kind of manpower they would have. You know, every one of your guys that die becomes um, a worker for them and they have way better technology somehow but uh, I'm sure mysteries like that will be solved there are jumps as well that we can jump over but they just they don't feel good like you can see what I mean with the physics it's just yeah it's yeah it's just shit <laughs> It's just, you know, I don't even know why that those sort of jump ramps are there. Um, but anyway, another one here, actually. Steady as she goes. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, so the Jeep, or the Lynx, I think it's called, does kind of try its best to float through terrain and things like that. It's trying to, like, stick to the ground. It's really hard to explain. You miss women. Well, there's still one alive. And she's in charge, apparently. So, anyway, if we get here, this is another intelligence report. Spires. Found a soldier on patrol outside Exeter. Looks like he's been on his own for quite a while. Doesn't talk much. But he ate a day's rations in about five minutes. 25th of November, 50. The soldier's finally coming around. His name's Buckler. He was there when uh, the Chimera took Salisbury. They had prepared for a ground war. Fortified trenches, tanks, the full Monty. But the Chimera attacked with spires. Crawlers infected all of the Salisbury in minutes. Buckler wouldn't say how he survived. Everyone thinks he just plain ran. Nobody would blame him. Yeah, that's so... Like, how do you defend against that? that kind of uh, power, I guess the answer just is you don't, really. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Um, oh. If you can... It does make me wonder, though. Why don't they use that strategy for everything? Mm, there must be some kind of limitation, I guess. Maybe those spire missile things are complicated to produce. Or maybe it's just gameplay logic, but I always try to think a little bit more outside the box. I don't like to write it off as just, it's a video game. Because that's not fun. Luckily, these leapers aren't up to much. And I will say, yeah, 
it's kind of a bit weird fighting these guys in this thing because they're totally outmatched. If we're sick of fighting, yeah, I guess they should be sick of fighting. That makes sense. Except they don't really have any kind of wants or desires apart from to kill. That's the trouble with the human condition. Ooh, we have all these emotions and stuff that get in the way of our killing ability. Or at least get in the way of some of our killing ability. Whereas obviously these things that are bred for war I don't really have that uh, limitation. Yep. Oh god, that feels so good. Yes. <laughs> oh baby. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Now also, yeah, one thing that I'm kind of upset about is you see those entrances to those buildings? You absolutely, by looking at the dimensions, can fit a Lynx in there. Or this Lynx in there. But you can't. You see, there's an invisible wall that stops you going in. If this was Halo, you could get that in there. Because, man, the places we took that Warthog. That Warthog went places, man, I'm telling you. That was half the fun, though. That, I think that's one of the things that made Halo different. The fact that uh, you could cheese weapons and vehicles into places they weren't meant to go. Um, and, you know, you could do stupid, stupid stuff like uh, flying off a, a massive jump over there and jumping off your warthog and, and hijacking a bun uh, banshee midair and you could get a scorpion tank and somehow stick it up on a rock somewhere and fire from the enemies from miles away. There's just... Uh, it, it was so open. You know? Hello. It really did feel like they just made a sandbox to have fun in. And that is something that they have even to Halo Infinite. And say what you will about Halo Infinite, I have. <laughs> um, it's still got that sense to it. It may have lost every other ounce of identity along the way. Ugh. But it still has that just sandbox craziness to it. That no other game has done. on you bastards just all the vehicles as well are really good oh man I'm I'm convincing myself I should be playing Halo but, but we shall persevere we shall keep dropping these guys I would say that this game has a superb story though. It really does and that is the uh, carrot on the uh, proverbial stick that keeps me going with this one. I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing how Resistance 2 and 3 hold up in the gameplay department. Oof! How are we doing in here? You can see the accuracy on this gun. <laughs> it just fires all over the place. Right, everybody's dead. Almost everybody. What was he doing? I think he was taking a shit behind the behind that cover there. Curious. Alright, well, let's get to work on these guys. Keep going. Oh boy. It's fine. It's fine. Let's give this hailstorm. Now this is a weapon. Oh god. Let's just fire off an entire shot. An entire mag, I should say. Now, unfortunately, you don't get a lot of ammo with this thing. Which kind of makes sense, because it's ridiculous. But this thing, this... You can unfuck 
almost any situation with this gun. It's probably my favourite gun in this game. Uh, apart from the M... Oh, was it? The M5A2 carbine. The only thing holding the hailstorm back is just the amount of ammo you get for it. Which, you know, yeah, you've got to understand, I guess. Oh, they've got air support dropping on fresh bastards. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, he didn't know what hit him. I know what hit him. It was me. <laughs> oh, it's so satisfying. But you can see Cartwright really is having trouble getting that gun anywhere near aimed at these guys. Uh, we also need some health. Let's go grab some health. Let's see, two jars of honey. Lovely. Lovely. 